I'm Alan Fenn at MIT Lincoln Laboratory, and this is lecture number two, Array Mutual Coupling Effects on Adaptive Radar Clutter Suppression. This lecture is part of the lecture series on adaptive antennas and phased arrays. Here's the course content breakdown by topic for this particular lecture, number two. We'll be covering adaptive antenna theory, radar clutter suppression, applied to phased arrays. This would be considered an antenna measurement technique. We'll be taking into account array mutual coupling and we'll be exploring primarily far field characteristics. So the purpose of this lecture is to review the displaced phase center antenna radar clutter cancellation technique and to describe simulations that quantify clutter cancellation performance. Here's an outline of the talk after a brief introduction and background. I'll describe the methods that are used in analyzing displaced phase center antennas, show you some results, and then we'll summarize. So as an introduction, adaptive antennas and phased arrays have been explored by numerous researchers since the 1950s. The primary functions of an adaptive antenna system are to minimize or null interference and jamming, but also to suppress radar clutter and to detect radar targets. So in this talk, we're going to be concentrating on the antenna effects that would be used in eliminating radar clutter using a phased array antenna system with multiple phase centers. So this talk does involve some signal processing, which is used in eliminating the clutter. In this talk, we'll be considering the clutter and geometry for a space-based radar antenna, but it could be applied to an airborne radar as well, an airborne radar moving over the ground, or a space-based radar moving over the Earth. On the left, we're showing typical reflectivity of L-band sea clutter, which as the grazing angle increases, the mean radar cross-section per unit area also increases. So at 90 degrees, when we're looking straight down at the earth, or straight down at the ground, we would tend to have maximum clutter. And then looking toward the horizon, the grazing angle gets smaller, and we would expect a smaller amount of clutter. Let's consider now the displaced phase center antenna, DPCA, technique for radar clutter cancellation and target detection. Consider the diagram shown here, where we have a moving DPCA array platform and a moving target with respect to the background clutter of the Earth. We're going to use the fact that the target is moving and has some velocity to pull out the target signal with respect to the stationary or fixed clutter. So as this DPCA is moving, on transmit, initially for the first transmission, we'll consider point A. We have got this dashed position of the aperture. And we're going to transmit from the full aperture with the phase center position A. We'll send out a pulse, a radar pulse, toward the target. Now after the pulse repetition interval, the array will have moved to a new position, so at the center of the array is at position B. So that's a solid rectangle. That's the new position of the aperture, and the phase center would be right in the position B. We send out a second pulse, and now we wait for the pulses to come back. And what we want to do is form an equivalent monostatic radar location for each of the received phase centers, we'll call them a receive and B receive. So in the first case, when the pulse comes back from the initial transmission at A, the aperture will be here. And now when the aperture has moved during the PRI, we're going to move the phase center backward toward position B such that the position AB sees a common phase center with respect to B and A on transmit and receive. So now that we've essentially formed a fixed monostatic radar location, when we 
observe the signals that have reflected back from the target and the clutter. The moving target can be detected due to its phase shift that occurs in one PRI, whereas the stationary clutter signal can be canceled because it's not moving. So we basically have two looks at the same environment, and that's how the DPCA clutter cancellation works. Now here's some design parameters for a DPCA array. We have a choice of the size of the array antenna, the type of array antenna elements, they could be dipoles, monopoles, waveguides, or microstrip patches, for example, or other types of elements. The array lattice typically can be either rectangular or hexagonal. Now there's different ways of terminating the array edge. Typically there'll be a number of passively terminated elements or rows of guard bands to avoid array edge effects. And then, of course, the ground plane size can be part of the design space. Face center displacement is an important design parameter. We'll be talking about that. And the scan sector, or electronic scanning of the phased array, is uh, also going to be addressed in this talk. So let's go through some of the methods that are used. In this talk, we'll be considering a corporate feed for two received phase centers. Displaced phase center antenna can, of course, also have more than two phase centers. It can have three or more phase centers. But we're going to restrict our attention to just two independent received beam formers in this lecture. So here's the array. It's an array of n elements. And there'll be an incident wavefront on receive. And so due to mutual coupling effects, the signals that are received would be altered from the case where we had, say, an isotropic array with no mutual coupling. So as we're going to see, the mutual coupling effects can be important in considering the DPCA clutter cancellation. So each of these elements goes through a two-way power splitter, and so we form two phase centers, phase center A and phase center B on receive. So we have two array outputs, A and B, and there's a set of TR modules in phase center A and a set of TR modules in phase center B. These modules can actually be a single module with two signal paths, an A and B path. So in this particular lecture, we're going to ignore any TR module error effects. and We're just simply going to concentrate on mutual coupling effects on DPCA clutter cancellation performance. Here's an example of two types of receive apertures, one where the illumination functions, the displaced face center antenna patterns, would essentially be formed from two overlapped face centers. A and B are overlapped. And the face center displacement shown here is delta, and it can be varied. In the case where delta is at a maximum, then the apertures are fully split apart so that A and B, the two phase centers, are formed from positions A and B. So an amplitude taper generated by the array TR modules can be used to move these phase centers. So that's done in hardware. Now there's an asymmetry in the array mutual coupling due to the surrounding environment. So let's consider forward face center A, subarray A, and the trailing subarray B. And if you look at this overall antenna aperture, there's a mirror symmetry, and so that the face center A sees a different number of elements to its right than face center B sees. And it's this mutual coupling that can alter the beam shape slightly and cause it to be more difficult to cancel clutter and to match these beams. Now, typically we'll put in guard bands to make the phase centers look more similar and that's what's going to be studied in this lecture. It's the type of array termination its effect on the phase center radiation patterns of phase centers A and B. I'll be exploring two types of phased array antenna elements in this lecture. Both of these will be a simple wire, in this case a monopole array or dipole array. 
both of these will be with respect to our ground plane, which will be assumed to be infinite in the simulations. So a typical theoretical element pattern for a monopole would have a null at zero degrees, and in the case of the space-based radar, the zero degrees would be looking straight down. You recall that we had maximum clutter looking straight down, and so an element that actually has a null is good in terms of reducing deterministically clutter looking straight down. Now we'd like to have the ability to scan to wide angles looking at the horizon of the Earth, for example. And so the scan sector, say from 30 to 60 degrees, could be used for a space-based radar. Now for a dipole antenna array, there's typically uniform coverage over a very large region. Of course, having radiation at broadside in the case of a space-based radar would give you more clutter to start with. However, both types of elements could be used for a very large aperture space-based radar. Typically the monopoles would be a quarter wavelength long and the dipoles would be a half wavelength long and the dipoles would typically be spaced approximately a quarter wavelength over the ground plane. Now we would typically use the method of images to analyze the arrays. We would take the array over a ground plane and replace it by the array with an image in free space for convenience. So we do that either for a monopole array or a dipole array. And it allows the method of moments to be used very conveniently to simulate array mutual coupling effects. Now the pattern correlation for two phase centers can be described by a clutter cancellation matrix or a pattern correlation matrix. It's a two by two matrix where the correlation between two channels can be expressed as shown here, which basically involves the product of the transmit pattern squared times the receive patterns I and J on two channels. And then there's a, a phase factor which allows for the case where the phase centers are not in the optimum location to affect DPCA performance. The factor A in our case is a function of the radar waveform and other parameters. And we're we're going to assume that's equal to 1 in this lecture for convenience. Now the radar clutter cancellation factor can be derived. It's derived in the book. And it's given by this expression here. 1 minus the covariance matrix element 1, 2 magnitude squared over the covariance matrix 1, 1 element and covariance matrix 2 element, uh, the product. So it's a very simple expression. And we'll be using this clutter cancellation factor to show how the clutter power would be reduced as perceived by the radar. And in this lecture, the cancellation is expressed as a positive decibel value by taking 10 log base 10 of 1 over C. Now, I mentioned earlier we were going to simulate DPCA rays with monopoles and dipoles, and we are going to do that. Now, we also had measured data at Lincoln Laboratory for a prototype L-band DPC array, so I'll show some comparisons against measurements in this lecture. Now the actual DPCA test array that we built was an array of 96 monopole elements roughly 1.5 meters across in a hexagonal lattice on a 2.1 meter ground plane. In the simulated arrays we can use the same lattice but instead of just monopole elements, we can do monopoles or dipoles, which are shown here. And so we'll simulate as, as close as we can the uh, array that was built and tested. So let me show you some results. This slide shows simulated DPCA radiation patterns for 96 element monopole phased array. So the diagram in the upper left shows the monopole array geometry. It's roughly a 1.5 meter array with two rows of passively terminated elements surrounding the active array. And this is on an infinite ground plane. 
Now we are, we've analyzed monopoles and dipoles and uh, in the next slide I'll be showing you a comparison of the monopole array simulated versus measured. Now the transmit pattern would use the full aperture as described before. In this example we've got a 10 dB cosine taper and the beam has been steered away from broadside. On receive, the two receive amplitude and phase patterns are shown here on the right. The beam has been steered away from broadside. We see very good agreement between phase centers A and B when we use three column separation between the phase centers. But there are some differences. You can see some amplitude and phase differences and this would cause the clutter cancellation to be uh, less than infinity. In this case the clutter cancellation is around 42 dB based on the radiation pattern amplitude and phase that's been simulated. Now as I mentioned earlier we have built a L-band DPCA array at Lincoln Laboratory. This array had 96 elements in the array and then two guard bands of elements surrounding the 96 element array. So in the simulations we simulated both monopoles and dipoles and so the monopole array results are shown on the left and the variable is the phase center displacement in columns and then this shows the effect of different scan angles from 30 degrees to 55 degrees from broadside for the monopole array. And so for the measurements we had an example where we scanned the beam 40 degrees and that's shown as the dots. That's the measured. And the simulated is a solid. This is at 40 degrees. And so in the measurements we had TR module errors and that would limit the performance to around 40 dB or a little bit better than that. Whereas in the simulations there were no TR module effects, just the array mutual coupling, so we got a higher cancellation. And you can see that as the scan angle increases away from broadside for this particular size monopole array, that there is degradation in the DPCA clutter cancellation due to array mutual coupling effects. Now for the dipole array, the array can scan all the way to broadside. And here we're starting the scan angle at 10 degrees, going to 55 degrees. And there is less spread in the curves. The clutter cancellation varies between 40 and 60 dB, according to the theoretical simulation. And the curves are fairly flat versus phase center column displacement. So monopoles and dipoles do behave differently for this particular size 96 element array. Later we'll show that as the array is much larger there's less difference between monopoles and dipoles. But typically we can see for the monopole array that the cancellation does decrease as the phase center displacement increases and we do see some degradation as well for dipoles. And that's because the arrays essentially have fewer elements in them as the phase center displacement increases. Each subarray would have fewer elements as we split the phase centers farther and farther apart. So now we're going to study the effective variation of some of the DPCA parameters. We're going to change the phase center displacement. We're going to change the number of rows, number of columns, and number of guard bands. So first, let's consider 96 element phased arrays of both monopoles and dipoles with three and six column displacement for a 96 element array. This would be on an infinite ground plane. So the vertical axis is cancellation. The horizontal axis is the scan angle from broadside. The solid curves are for monopole elements with three and six column displacement and the dash curves are for the dipoles again with three and six column displacement and so as we scan the angle further from broadside we do see degradation in the DPCA cancellation the cancellation varies from 
on the order of 30 dB to about 55 to 60 dB depending on the scan angle. So this is what the theory would predict for a 3 and 6 column displacement for a small 96 element array. And we're going to repeat this again for larger arrays. Before we do that, we're going to look a little more detail at 96 element arrays with 3 column displacement and we're going to show what happens if you have no guard bands and if you have two guard bands. So on the left, for a dipole array, we see that for a 40 degree scan angle, we get a clutter cancellation on the order of about 37 dB. And if you have two guard bands surrounding the active part of the array, the cancellation is above 50 dB. So there's a significant difference in having guard bands. And we see the same effect when the scan angle is 55 degrees. We go from a cancellation that's around 35 dB to about 43 dB. Another effect that we see is that by adding guard bands, the phase center displacement appears to be more accurate when you have guard bands. You can see that the peak occurs roughly at zero. And this is related to the phase term that was shown in the equation for the clutter cancellation earlier. In other words, the, the actual phase center is not exactly where it's expected to be when you have mutual coupling effects, unless you have guard bands, which essentially allows the phase centers to uh, be closer to the theoretical value. So to summarize, the DPCA cancellation increases when guard bands are used. And the location of the, of the phase centers are closer to where you would expect them to be when you use guard bands. So now what we're going to do is vary the number of rows for a large DPCA phased array. We'll consider split apertures where the phase centers have been displaced the maximum amount apart. We will use guard bands and we're going to fix the number of columns at 128. We'll make it a large array and we'll vary the number of rows to see how that affects DPCA performance. So here's the clutter cancellation versus number of rows for large DPCA phased arrays. We've got essentially with 128 rows at L band a 16 meter aperture. And so now we're varying the number of rows and what we see is that the clutter cancellation is fairly flat. It is dependent on scan angle. Here's 55 degrees and here's 40 degrees. And for the case of two guard bands with a hexagonal lattice and 64 column phase center displacement, as you've increased the number of rows in the array from 4 to 16, there's not much effect. And so the principal effect is related to the phase center displacement and the scan angle, but not the number of rows. And we use that in the, the analysis to select the number of rows and then study the effect of varying the number of columns or the length of the array. So now what we want to do is study the effect of number of columns and number of guard bands for a fixed number of rows. And we're going to fix the number of rows at 8 and we'll vary the number of columns. So here are the results when we use one-half aperture phase center displacement, the DPCA cancellation versus number of active columns when we fix the number of rows at 8. And we're investigating both the square lattice array and the hexagonal lattice array. So for the square lattice array shown on the left for monopoles and dipoles, we see that as the number of active columns increases that the clutter cancellation improves. And that's related to the number of elements in the array being increased as we increase the number of columns. And so as the scan angle increases, we do see the cancellation being reduced. We do see some differences between monopoles and dipoles, and it depends on the scan angle. And it depends on the number of active columns. What's interesting is that for a small array, it starts out that the dipole 
behaves somewhat better than the monopole element for the 55 degree scan angle, but when you go to larger arrays, the monopole actually behaves better than the dipole. That's due to array mutual coupling effects. So that's for the square lattice. For a hexagonal lattice, there's not as much difference between monopoles and dipoles, but there is some difference. So this is with two guard bands, 10 dB cosine taper on receive and transmit. So to summarize, the DPCA cancellation increases as the number of columns increases, but it does depend on the somewhat on the type of element, and it does depend on the scan angle. Now we take the same data that was shown in the previous slide and convert it to array length in meters. And so the data are replotted this way. And again, we see that for larger scan angles, there's some reduction in the clutter cancellation. There is some difference whether it's monopoles or dipoles, so it's important to take into account the type of array radiating element. In this slide, we had two guard bands and eight active rows, and we use the full phase center displacement between the two phase centers. So again, in summary, the DPCA cancellation does increase as the array length increases, but we have to take into account the scan angle and the type of radiating element. So now we look at the clutter cancellation versus phase center displacement for a fixed size large array. So in this case, we've got an eight row by 108, 28 column or 1,000, 24 element active array. We've got two guard bands and we're using a hexagonal lattice. And what's interesting is that for a particular scan angle, that the phase center displacement, since it's such a large array, is relatively insensitive to the phase center displacement in columns. But of course, the cancellation does degrade as the scan angle increases. But notice these values are very large. The uh, clutter cancellation is in excess of about 65 dB. Again, we're not, we don't have any TR module errors being simulated, and that would degrade the performance. So in summary, for large arrays and for fixed scan angle, the DPCA clutter cancellation is insensitive to phase center displacement. So let's summarize. So in summary, the displaced phase center antenna technique for radar clutter cancellation has been reviewed. Mutual coupling does affect DPCA clutter cancellation. The clutter cancellation depends on the size of the array, the type of array antenna element. We looked at dipoles and monopoles, but other elements such as waveguides or microstrip patches uh, should be investigated. The array lattice is a factor. The number of passively terminated elements or guard bands is a factor. Uh, the phase center displacement can uh, significantly affect the DPCA performance as well as the scanning from broadside or scan sector. And here's the book reference. Chapter 2 corresponds to this lecture. Uh, the book is called Adaptive Antennas and Phased Arrays for Radar and Communications.